Welcome to One Stop Co-op Shop. Steve here. I'm a big fan of superheroes and especially Marvel, as you can tell. I like my Marvel games. So I'm not be talking about any of these you see here, but instead we'll be taking a look at Marvel United. Taking a look at, well, is this a good game for kids? Is it a good game for adults? Maybe families? Maybe none of the above? We'll stick around and we'll dive in. Marvel United is a one to four player cooperative game where each player will choose a Marvel superhero to take on a villain. If the players can collectively knock the villain down to zero health, you win the game. If you run out of resources or run out of time, then you lose the game. And there's normally some alternate win condition for the villains as well. So the basic flow of the game is each player will be playing with a deck of cards. The deck of cards will range from 10 to 12 cards, depending on difficulty settings. And you'll be playing one card a turn from this hand of three cards. And what you'll be doing is these cards have icons at the bottom of them, which indicate what type of actions you're allowed to take during your turn. You don't have to do all your actions, but honestly, you want to in this game. These are the resources you have in the game. And you need, the resources are movement, attack, and heroic action. Movement allows you to move around the board, and you can move around the board in a clockwise fashion. Attack lets you attack bad guys or thugs in your space. And the heroic action lets you rescue civilians or potentially deal with other threats on the board. You are unable to hit the villain until you're able to complete a number of missions. There are three missions in the game. You can defeat thugs, rescue civilians, or clear threats. In order to do this, you need to play the proper number of icons to to put a number of tokens on these cards, be it a threat card token or a civilian or thug token. Once these cards are completed, you're able to remove it from the board and complete one of the missions. Now, the first mission you complete will cause an acceleration. Basically, the villain will act faster. So normally how it works is the villain takes the first turn, heroes take three turns, and then the villain will take another turn, and you alternate a villain, three heroes, a villain, three heroes. However, that changes once you complete your first mission. Once you complete your first mission, then it becomes villain, two hero turns, villain, two hero turns in that order. And that lasts for the rest of the game. Now you're not able to deal any damage to the villain, the main boss, until you complete your second mission. Once you complete your second mission, then you have the ability to actually damage the boss. If you're able to defeat the boss before time runs out, you win the game. This leads me to my number five for the game. My number five is going to be a pro, and that's going to be the fast play time of this game. Honestly, you can play this game in 30 minutes or less. It is very quick, and it has a lot to do with what you're doing in the game. When I looked at this game, I was hesitant, to say the least. I wasn't sure if I was going to back it. I honestly hemmed and hawed a lot with my mouse hovering over the back button for this. And admittedly, the reason why I backed it in the first place was because I knew my son, who's five years old, would love this game. He's a superhero fan, and he could actually play this without me hovering over his shoulder. He can look at the icons. He can understand what the icons do. So I said, you know what? Let's try it. Let's see how this works. Worst case scenario, he'll enjoy it. If I don't like it, that's okay. But if I like it, then it's a double win. And so my hesitancy around this is because, well, looking at the game, it looks really simple. And honestly, it kind of is in a sense. The actions you do in the game are simple. You move, you attack, you do heroic action. That's basically it. Really basic. So the nice thing about this, though, is because that's so basic, it actually makes it play very quickly. Because you're not like, well, do I move three spaces? Do I move four? Is this difficult terrain? Is this guy in my line of sight? None of that stuff's in this game. It's just... Very basic, very simple, so it's very quick to resolve these actions. However, it's just because it's quick and simple to resolve these actions doesn't mean it's not nuanced. I found it to be a lot more behind the scenes with decisions. Like, my decisions really matter in this game, so that was refreshing, because you never want to play a game where it's just straightforward and simple, and you're just kind of doing really basic stuff. And yes, the actions resolve are simple, but the decision space is definitely there, and I'll get into that more later. Moving on to my number four for this game, that is gonna be a con. And that's gonna be the luck of the cards on the villain side. The cards you draw on your hero side, depending on what level you play, you draw three cards, and so you see roughly a fourth of your deck to, to a bit more than that. So you're gonna see most of your deck pretty much the whole game, and it's pretty easy to get through. That's not that much of a problem to me. You kinda know you're gonna see everything eventually. 
And the villain deck, you will see most of it through, uh, as well, but the kicker is you can have really swingy turns in the sense that the villain could potentially not do much or could do something very detrimental. And a perfect example of this is how the game is set up. So when you set up the game, you can choose the villain to start on any location you want, and the locations are clockwise around the board, and all the heroes are on the opposite side of the board, which winds up being three spaces away. And this is important because if the very first card in the villain deck, who goes first in each game, winds up being move three and bam, which is do their big effect or their, their nasty effect, they will move directly in your spot and in the base game at least, hit every hero there. So already out of the gate, you have something bad to deal with and everyone took it wounds, which means you are now running the rest of the game with less cards. That makes a big difference at that point in the game versus having that same effect happen later where he hits you sometime later. And maybe even one or two heroes as opposed to all three or all four of them. And I looked at the decks. There is one card in all of the decks that can do that. So you have a one in 12 chance of it happening out of the gate. So that is, that's a negative. It can be swinging in that regard. The silver lining here is that because the game is so fast to play, yeah, I can run into this swing of bad luck, but I can try it out and if it works, great. If it doesn't work, that's fine. I didn't waste a lot of time trying to do something that was gonna be too difficult or, or too much of a swing in one way or the other. And normally it evens out pretty quickly after that, but just be aware that you can get lucky pulls and unlucky pulls in this for sure. My number three for this game is a pro and that's gonna be the high difficulty. I wasn't expecting it to be as difficult as it was. Now granted, on the easiest settings, you're going to win most of your games, especially for adults. I honestly do not recommend playing this game on the easiest settings with adults. I mean, you can. Some characters are harder than others and, and the setups can make a difference, but I would recommend definitely increasing it. And how the difficulty changes in the game is each character has a single wild icon on one card and a double wild icon on another card. And you're supposed to remove one or both these cards from the game depending on the difficulty you want. Sounds really simple and honestly it's an easy thing to do, but the wilds have a huge impact on the game because the wild by definition is exactly what you want at the time you want it. And so not having access to this and having to actually discuss and plan like, well, I need attack. Well, I don't need attack. I need heroic action. Well, how can I, what cards can I play that kind of benefit both of us, but doesn't leave you out in the dust? And so th that makes it a challenge. And like I said before, if you play at higher difficulty levels, you have less cards in deck. And so now you have less resources because you can only play a card once a turn and you'll get those icons. And you won't be able to get those cards back in the most case, but regardless, you're losing icons, losing resources, every card you play in this game. And so at some point you're going to run out of resources. You may run out of movement, you may run out of attack. And so you really have to coordinate and figure out how to do this. So removing those wilds from the deck is a huge factor. In addition to that, different villains and different setups will be easier or harder. Like Ultron, for example, Ultron lays out a bunch of enemies on the board. And so if you play with Hulk, well, Hulk smashes a bunch of enemies in one location. That's what he's really good at. So you have an easier time playing against him as opposed to playing with a couple other characters. Or if you choose characters that have a lot of attack and maybe not another symbol you may need, you may struggle a little bit more on that end. Now this isn't always a pro because I can see a potential here that you could create a game which is the difficulty is so hard it might be near impossible. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I've been able to win on heroic levels I, with various setups. It's possible, but honestly, I had some luck in my favor. So it, we'll see what happens in the end when we get all the content for this game, assuming you want to buy all the content from the game. But I can see that being a possibility where, you know what, you grab a bunch of random villain, grab a random villain, grab some random heroes, set a difficulty. You don't really know what that's going to mean in the game. It could wind up being a negative experience in that you feel kind of hopeless. But at the same time, it's nice that the difficulty does go so high in the game and it was a big pro for me. That leads into my number two. My number two is that a pro and that the characters feel different. When I was looking at the game on Kickstarter, they were saying, yeah, look, Hulk does this and Captain America does that. And I was kind of honestly questioning it because as I could look at the Kickstarter page, they're like, you know what? All these guys have a deck of 10 to 12 cards. They have three icons on each card or three types of icons, right? 
So they're all be moving, punching, and doing heroic action. So like, how different can they really be? I had a lot of doubts. Like, uh, I'm not sure about that. And I knew that they had powers, but you only have powers on three of your cards. That's not much at all. So does Hulk feel like Hulk? Does Black Widow feel like Black Widow? And I can say after playing a number of times, I, they do feel different. I don't know if it's super significant. They do feel different, but like Hulk, I know, is really good at smashing things. I know Captain Marvel is really good at shooting things from a distance, and she's good at fighting. She doesn't have a lot of heroic actions, but I know Captain America has a lot of heroic actions. And so if I'm going against certain villains, I know I might need a hero that's good at heroic actions against this villain, or someone who's good at fighting against this other villain, or someone who has got enough movement because I know this other character cannot move very well. And so you can kind of like understand like categories they fall into. In the core box, I think they fall into distinct categories. Like they all feel different. Now, when looking at the big Kickstarter coming down, assuming you got all the characters, are all 70-some characters going to feel different in that regard? I don't know. We'll see what happens. They might fall into categories where these 20 heroes feel like fighters, these 20 heroes feel like good heroic action people, so on and so forth. I suspect that's might what it wind up being, but we'll reevaluate when the rest of content comes. Regardless, I did feel, like I said earlier, if you play with certain heroes against certain villains, the game will feel easier and harder. It's going to affect your difficulty. So that alone tells me that they do feel different. That there is an impact there, for sure. Now, while the heroes are different, they're not super different. I honestly would have preferred more differentiation between them. It's, it's fine as is, but the villains feel very different. There's three of them in the core box, and they all have different effects, and they play very different to each other. Red Skull is trying to cause fear, and he's got this track that increases, and if you ever reach at the end, you lose the game. Ultron's dropping down tons of bad guys. You have to try to keep the board manageable while all these robots are flying everywhere. And Taskmaster, well, he's a jerk. <laughs> he's really hard to deal with because he's causing all these crises around the, the city, and you have to manage those crises before you can even engage them. So he's tricky to get a window of opportunity to punch them. And all of those, they feel very, very different. And looking at what's coming down the pipe, I think these other ones sound different as well. So I'm very excited for the villains in this game. I think they are looking to be a very good job. And each villain does add the re to replayability. Now leading to my number one, this one was the first one I put on my list because it's the most obvious effect in the game. That's a big pro, and that is the cooperation. The cooperation is huge in this game. You cannot play this game, especially on higher difficulty levels, without cooperating. And what I mean by that is, honestly, when you play your cards, the person who played in front of you, you get their actions as well. And on the easier difficulty levels, you can play kind of in your box, in your zone, not really paying attention to what they're doing, and you may be able to get by, you may be able to win, that's fine. But if you crank it up to a difficult, decent difficulty level, you can't do that anymore because you only have so many punches, you only have so many movements, you only have so many heroic actions. So you have to figure out like, was now the right time for me to play it? And can, more importantly, can my the players around me, can they utilize that? Because if I play a card that's really good for me, but the person after me can't utilize it, well now we're being inefficient. And in this game on higher difficulty levels, that plays a big factor for sure. Uh, you won't win in certain situations by doing that. So it's not only cooperating with what card you play, but also honestly cooperating with how you how the turn order winds up being, how you sit around the table. Because whoever goes before you, you will get their icons. So for example, Hulk, he's not very good at heroic actions. If I have him follow Captain America, well now he has access to all of Captain America's uh, heroic action icons. So it can really change how you cooperate with like, okay, I need to, I know I need to fill some gaps on this hero by having another hero play in front of them. And so you may wind up changing your seats on the game to, to leverage that. And you may honestly need to for a higher difficulty games. Because in this game, you are playing through your deck of cards. Once your deck of cards runs out, uh, the game ends, you lose the game. If the villain cards run out, you lose the game as well. So that's the timer in the game. And you only have so many of each icon in your deck. So if you wind up playing a card, and like I said before, your next person going cannot utilize it, those are wasted icons. They can be a huge difference because you only, like I said, you only have so many and they go by fast. This game is fast playing, you will run out. Some people not like that, but also winds up being a bit of card counting. Like I honestly feel myself counting cards. Like, okay, I know I've got about this many icons left. I need to make sure that, you know what, while I could go out and punch that guy, 
it's probably let someone else punch it because one, it's not a huge risk in that area that's gonna cause problems. So we have a little bit of time to, to wait. And I'm, I'd rather save my ability to be more versatile late on the game or hit the boss late in the game, for example. And these are the nuances, the little hit tidbits in the game that I wasn't expecting. I was honestly coming to the game thinking, okay, you know what? This is gonna be a dumb game. We're gonna play an icon, we're gonna move over here, we're gonna do this thing, it's gonna be real simple. And like I said, I mentioned before, the actions are very simple, but the decisions about trying to keep track of how many icons are in your deck, when's the best time to play the card, where to sit, because that makes a difference. How do I leverage my card with a previous person and the next person comes after me? Because the nice thing about this game, there's not much downtime. Everyone is talking because everyone is involved in what's happening on the table. Well, unless you're playing four players, the fourth player, because you only affect the person to your right, they're gonna get the icons you play. The person on the left, you're getting their icons. So you're definitely talking with them. And the person across the table, if you're playing four players, may not be as involved. So it's a negative there in a sense. But honestly, they wanna hear what the person on your right is saying because what their plan is gonna affect them. So it's this, this mesh of interconnectivity that everyone needs to work together and to make this happen. I really, really appreciate that. It was simple to do and it's effective. Like I said, my five-year-old can play this game and he understands like, oh dad, if I play this, I'll give you some fight, that'll help you. I'm like, yes, we will, thank you. And I love that about this game. That is the biggest pro for this game is definitely the cooperation. So ultimately, do I recommend this game? Definitely, strong recommend for me. And that surprises me. I think this game is fantastic. I was like, coming into this, I like, you know what? This might just be a kid's game. It might be simple, it might be dumb. I don't know about this. But as I played it more and more and got into the nuance of like, well, how, like I said before, the cooperation and trying to do card counting and honestly managing those resources, I'm like, well, I was not expecting that at all. It doesn't seem like it has that much depth on the surface when you're just looking at what the components on the game and what it seems to be. But what it seems to be and how it, it played for me was very different. Now, granted, if you play on easy level, and you play with certain setups, you may not experience this. You, it'll be it'll be a walk in the park in some cases for sure. Uh, but it's nice for kids. You can set that level, and they can play suboptimally, and you'll be fine. You still have a fun experience with them at least. But for adults, crank that sucker up to heroic level, or or maybe just below that, depending on what boss you're going against or what type of settings you're going against. And it was a lot of fun. St strong recommend for me. I think this game is fantastic. I'm very excited to see what the other content that comes out for this game. We'll see how this holds water when that rest of it comes out. But so far, I am very happy with this purchase and looking forward to for more. So another thing I want to mention real quick, didn't make my top five because I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And that is the component quality. The locations in the game, they're flimsy cardstock. They're not even cardboard. And so you will probably see warping for sure, at least. But talk to a number of people and it's been warping on their end due to humidity and whatever environment you're playing in. Now, it's not a huge deal because you can bend them back the other way and it normally lays flat. At least for me, it hasn't been a problem. I can normally counteract any warping that happens and it will lay flat for the whole game for me generally when I do that. But just getting into it, that that could be an issue. Now, the game is about 30 bucks at Walmart. So for what you're getting and this lower quality component, uh, I think it's worth it for that price point. If this was a more expensive game, it had these component issues, it would be a bigger deal for me, for sure. Uh, but as, as it's priced now, I think it's I think it's worth it. The other thing I mentioned is the solo mode. You can't play it solo, and you can play solo with two hands, for example. There's another solo mode where you take three heroes, and you mix all the cards together, and you play with that hand. And so you'll draw five cards, and when you run out of all five cards, you're, you lose the game. And so that actually is worth playing, in my opinion. I enjoy playing this solo. I was not expecting that. And I like playing it solo because it played different than multiplayer. Because in multiplayer, you have to maintain the turn order structure. If Iron Man goes, then Hulk goes, then Black Widow goes, and then back to Iron Man, then it's back to Hulk, right? So you always have the same order no matter what happens. But in solo mode, if you do this, this variant that's in the book, it, you can play whatever hero you have in your hand because you, you mixed all the three heroes into one deck. So I can play Iron Man three times in a row. Now, later on, I probably won't be able to do that again because I'll have less Iron Man cards in my deck. So eventually you will be playing all the heroes, but that does change game quite a bit. For example, there are cards in the game that allow you to be immune. You cannot take damage. 
if I play a card that now gives my this hero immunity, can't take damage, and then I play a number of cards that, and it doesn't get back to that character turn that had was immune, they can be immune for a long time. Like I could play a wasp who shrinks down, becomes immune from damage, and and then I can play like two or three Iron Man cards, and then maybe another two Hulk cards. And so I played five cards before she plays our next card. So that's five turns she was immune for. In a normal three player game, she would only be immune for her turn and then the two other hero turns in between it. So that's not much at all. You can really change the game a little bit how that works. In addition to that, like I said, the turn order matters. So the order you play the cards matters as well. And I found that fun. I found that challenging. Hope you enjoyed the review and we'll see you at the next stop.